to broaden the scope a little bit if you move on to page 14 page 14 of the standard there's a cartoon there uh, where you have china as uh, the bigger pig there and we have africa literally uh, scrambling for <laughs> you know that uh, um, milk that china has to offer caleb <laughs> is africa headed uh, you know uh, towards china for a good, for good reasons are we likely to have leverage as africa or are they taking, is there something that maybe we're not seeing something that's hidden i don't think we're, we're going to china for good reasons i think we just take an easier route uh, what the Western uh, British, uh, institutions were demanding was accountability. That you give you money for the roads, but you must have your human rights records clear, for instance. You must have accountability in how you manage your uh, resources. China doesn't give a damn about how you manage your, your, your country's internal issues. They don't care about human rights records. They give you money. But what China is doing is actually building and, 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 and growing its... Uh, it's a neo-colonial neo influence mm -hmm. of Africa, and I think money is a very good bait for China. I don't think I don't think Chinese will be a better colonialist than the British were. Probably, probably they'll be worse. They'll be worse rather. Especially when you look at their human rights yes, records yes, yes. and uh, some of the, uh, the authoritarian kind but of. But our, uh, our human rights record better than the China. <laughs> the, yeah, that might be the other yes, question yes, yes. to ask. Whether, but but two wrongs don't make a right. Yeah, don't make a right. right. The king and the queen of, uh, of England, for instance, m might have been terrible in their, in their colonial endeavors, but at the back of their mind, they had somebody reminding them and keeping a record that whatever you do, I turn you in future. Mm. I don't think China cares about that. Uh, if our leaders were going, were going there with, with a good record mm. of financial management, then uh, I would say it's for a good cause. It's for a good cause. But many of them have already mismanaged what they've heard from the West. Mm -hmm. They're already mismanaging what they are getting from China. And then uh, what Uhuru is doing is probably a good thing, as he says, loan is not a bad thing. But something that uh, our Katiba says, there must be public participation. Do we know how much we get from China? Do we know what the, 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 the final lines are saying? Nobody knows. The public is, is, is not aware. And, and Caleb, there is an access to information law in this country. Yeah. How many times have we journalists or Kenyans used the access to information law to yeah. demand for this information? I, I have no quarrel. What I'm saying is, and you hit Kibana earlier, earlier in the day, mm. there is very clear that before you do A, B, C, D, the public must participate in, must public in making that decision. Mm. So before we go to China, we, we, we must have had public, even the media must have been included in we want to borrow this amount of money for SGR. But did the media and, ask? And, and, no, no, it's not about the media asking. It's about the government breaking its own its law. But, but, but no, I think even that when it starts easily. in parliament. If, if, if the government breaks the law, <laughs> we can't excuse that. Okay. Of course, the media let, must let, demand. Let, let me hear from... from but, but we must respect the law. Yes, yes. James. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, the problem starts with parliament. Because even what the, parliament, what the government is borrowing, it, there's a strategy paper on uh, debt management. Mm -hmm. And it's parliament, actually, which... Uh, comes up uh, with the regulations and even policies on uh, what the government should borrow, how, from domestically, from uh, the international market. So the whole problem, as much as uh, sometimes MPs uh, complain uh, about the, 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 how the government is accumulating the debt, it is, uh, they're the ones who have the opportunity to lay on the government on its borrowing because everything emanates from parliament, the budget is made in parliament, Unlike in the past, when uh, the executive had the monopoly of making the budget, the constitution of 2010 changed the, 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 the way the, the, the budget is being uh, uh, made. So the problem, according to me, emanates in Parliament. Okay. It's the parliamentarians. And, and, and yeah. maybe, maybe you have a point there. If we look at page six of the standard, uh, we were duped to increase taxes on fuel in 2013, says... Um, an MP who was in office in 2013, that's uh, Kanini Kega. And uh, these are the people who we've put in place to <laughs> represent us. And these, actually, when, when we talk about public yeah, participation, these are, these are the people who represent because we can't all go. You know, and, and actually, they, even when they're just making uh, the budget, there are, uh, the, 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 there's a moment when even the members of the public are supposed to go and give their views. But when they just call for such a kind of meetings, nobody goes because it happens in, uh, in KICC. I normally attend such a kind of meetings. 
when members of the public are called in to give their views, they don't go. But later, when those policies have been made, we that's the time they start complaining. Mm -hmm. There is avenues for... The question is, how are they called? It's, it's <laughs> just put in paper. <laughs> let, let, let me tell you. you know, just simply put it in this paper, then, yes. but then you have to use the radio, you have, to use all, you have all the mechanisms. You have, you have local radio stations, you have the Kamemes and the Mulembes of this world. Mm. Where governor, I've worked with governors before. Where governors call Wanainchi through radio, let's say Cas FM or uh, Maisha FM, people are the vernacular came. stations. They come there, they come with their thousands. Mm. So when you simply put plus an advert in, 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 in the print media, I know people, a few people will read, then you. Then you but but you, Caleb, you are, are we being honest when we say that even if you put an announcement, people will come up? Is the civil education in Kenya that good to that the point good. where yeah. yes. even when they come, they fully understand what they're coming uh, to do? As I'm but, saying, but I think our, our, again, our MPs are simply conmen. <laughs> <laughs> we, we avoid we avoid in indulging in proper civic education deliberately, yeah. so that it fails. Then you blame one entity for failing. These guys can tell us that, that they are duped. Who duped them? <laughs> but, but I think even, the even the most important thing is, <laughs> even if there is that public uh, participation, again the executive mm. more or less. I mean, they are already have uh, a format of what they want. So you can just give your views. It's called public participation. But at the end game is the government. They already know what they, they, they want. Already want, what they want. Yeah, it doesn't uh, matter uh, how uh, much. What, what I, I I feel is that Kenyans we are living a very pretentious life. We are not sincere and honest to ourselves. We lament, but we do nothing. You know, there are recall clauses in our parliament. If there's any MP who is not performing, why can't we recall them? But well, have you looked at how to recall up an MP? Because uh, I mean, it's almost, it's almost uh, impossible. It's it, it, almost it's, impossible it, it, for you it, to do it, that. It, uh, somebody can go for it. Because we are complaining about the same MPs. Next year, we'll be the same people voting for the, same, for same, the people. same MPs. So, so who will yeah. solve this problem? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we must face up and say one or two or three MPs have not performed and we are recalling them or we are doing something about it. But just complaining and complaining is not helping us so much. Mm -hmm. So we'll remain. Are we angered enough as Kenyans to say yes. we, are, we are annoyed and we are doing something? You know, yeah. So, so, we are not angry. We are not angry. The arrest of Bob Dwine, just one MP, you could see the youth in Uganda working and saying, no. That's not going to happen. But, but is it here? When, when people call for even a, a proper demonstration, yes, demonstration I, yeah. I mean, people will say we will be on, on our, on our, on our, on our Facebook, Twitter and Facebook media. and complaining. Yeah. And we never participate. So we luckily, must get angry. Luckily for, <laughs> luckily for Uganda, they're not as tribal as we are. Because to, to, today, if, uh, if Mike was arrested, Go to the street, then people ask you where is this, which tribe is he from? I mean, uh, a good challenge. I mean, well, well, it's our people. It's an attack on our yes. people. So, so, All so right, we must and, be angered so that mm, we solve. But but I think we do. Uh, as members of the fourth estate, we do have a huge responsibility yeah. to ensure that the citizenry is uh, educated, especially civil education, and understand fully uh, the question of public participation. Because I was in Makueni County, and one of the things that they've managed to do, and I'm not holding brief for uh, Makueni County, but one of the things that they've managed to do effectively is the question of public participation. The, the, the projects that the government, the local government is working on does not come from the county government. It comes from the people co coming upwards, which is something that needs to do. But anyway, uh, moving on now to the Daily Nation, where the headline is 10,000 fund uh, to leak exam papers. This is what we're talking about. And again, impunity uh, with uh, rogue teachers and parents are already fundraising to buy good scores reveals next even as it talks tough about protecting integrity of tests. And again, I put it to you, gentlemen, the question here being not just the fact that the exams may leak, but the fact that now we have teachers and parents collaborating. Where does that leave the learner, the student who is supposed to be taught good morals and values, Caleb? I, I think uh, it, it bring me back home to the media. What do we tell a state of success in our media? I think we have to shift as media from focusing all the time on monetary value. Mm. That uh, Victor here is so successful because he's worth a billion mm. shillings. Mm. But we don't tell the reader or the viewer or the listener how did he make his billion. Mm -hmm. So we, we end up celebrating corruption mm -hmm. and theft and uh, shortcuts through our storytelling mm. of the wrong people as a... As a what we do you call celebrate... Them? The yes. We make them heroes. Mm, make them heroes. So our young people have known that uh, you really don't have to study hard. Mm. Daddy can buy exams for you. 
<laughs> Mummy can go to the supermarket and buy the papers for you mm. and you'll pass. And unfortunately, we don't also educate them on once you've got that job, even yes. if your papers were wrong, what do you do? Then you end up with very poor quality employees. Yes. Yes. And that's one of the biggest challenges. I've taught at the university for quite some time now. And, and you look at sometimes the people who came with A's from whatever school yes. and you want to cry. I mean, especially in departments like journalism where somebody got an A, overall is there, she can't write or he can't write even a single sentence. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so and you look at the dropout rates from even our universities the university it, it's, it's very and the high. rate of uh, interfaculty changes. changes somebody, yeah. You know, it tells you that these people are not prepared. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so we, are, we, we, we are selling our children. Yeah. It's not helping. We are just punishing those guys. The rate of even com uh, completion at the university is now not four years anymore. It's six, yes, seven, six years. seven years. Guys yeah. are just repeating, uh, which is a huge cost to the parent when the you are parents. paying for seven years instead of four. Absolutely. You are punishing when a student has Absolutely. to change courses two, three times in a course. Yeah. Some of them are just abandoning college because of mm. that pressure. Mm. So we must really rethink how mm. we want to look at education and how we want to help our children grow. Absolutely. It, it can't be just looked at in, in the monetary terms. Mm. And, and we must tell children that education is not meant to be a good job mm. or a good life, but mm. it helps you. In, I mean, an educated farmer and, edu and an educated farmer are different. Yes. So, so that value system, where we are, we as parents, I stopped going for, for, for school meetings. I am a parent, but I stopped. Because you go to a school meeting, and the things people are talking about is education trips, it's Teacher. motivating teachers, is how will we pay, you know, and, and you wonder, and then where is our, where, why are we talking about teacher and the parent mm. and the children? Is not, where is the child? I, where, where is, is the, the child, child yeah. we are talking about in, yeah. the, in this discussion? All right. So, and as we wind up on the newspaper review, James is also a story here three sides of the Mwilu case and uh, well there's a prosecutor there's a judge and there's a lawyer it's also another story that is there but again uh, just to weigh in on uh, this particular story of course without discussing the merits or demerits of it yeah um, I, I, I think uh, the media has uh, done well so far Although Buire uh, from uh, MSK have raised quite a number of issues on how the media is covered, there is a sense uh, that uh, the media has prosecuted the case before even it has gone to court. So what I can just say, the media has done well in exposing because uh, that is the work of the media and informing people of what is happening. But then we should just uh, protect the interest of uh, those who are uh, alleged to have committed the crime so that uh, at least they can just have a fair airing if the case goes to court. Mm. So the media must be very careful on what they're mentioning because already I think uh, the DCJ has already been... Uh, uh, the, the police has been prosecuted by the public, yeah. The, the court of public opinion. The court Caleb, of public opinion. On how we should be covering this, there are those who've accused, I even had, I think it was uh, one of the senators, uh, saying even from the headlines, it looks like uh, she's already guilty according to uh, some you know, uh, newspapers. I think, I think it's, a bit, it's a bit unfortunate. For me, it was, it was more like a mob lynch. Yeah. Uh, so that uh, she's already been uh, judged and, uh, and, and, and uh, prosecuted and uh, the sentence has, has been passed mm. as, as guilty, which uh, is pretty unfair. But I'm hoping that uh, common sense will prevail and that eventually she'll get justice. Okay. Uh, Victor, maybe something you'd like <laughs> was, to say about this? Okay, I, 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 I've read, I was reading tonight, because this coverage has had a lot of discussion elsewhere in almost all our journalism WhatsApp groups mm -hmm. we have been discussing, the merits and the merits, and, 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 and I was reading last night about the, the open justice system in the, in the U.S. and Australia and, and how that was meant to allow more public in involvement and engagement in, in judicial matters. Mm. But, but, but what I was reading was that uh, under the sub judge's role, that you can't go so much into sub the substance mm. of, of, a matter. Of, of a matter. But, but you can talk about it. Uh, I mean, so, so yes, it, it has had its merits and demerits. But I think uh, in this case, uh, and, and I've seen, looking at the, the nation going forward, it has been improving uh, gradually, like to balance. There's a book uh, given to me by Jokadi about open justice and how 
court reporting is evolving mm. in other countries and how people are doing it, I find this hope. Uh, this hope. All right. <laughs> Gentlemen, we're going to take a short break and uh, we come back with the newsroom. And a quick reminder of our question this morning that we'd like to interact with you, and that's where we're going to start from, is do you think the media is doing enough in highlighting the cost of living triggered by the fuel crisis? Do you think that the media is doing enough by, uh, in highlighting the high cost of living triggered by the fuel crisis? That's where we're going to start off from with your responses. Remember, the hashtag is Morning Express KTN. If you'd like to tweet, it's at KTN News, or you can tweet directly, and that's at Michael G. Gitonga. For now, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, it's time for the newsroom. Remember, you're welcome to participate in this conversation. As a, and as we take that break, we uh, will just take a look at uh, the traffic and I believe that's on Kenyatta Avenue and see how the traffic is flowing as we take that break. We will be right back. Yeah, 